All right, so I know I said we'd focus on the stock details page in this lesson, but I just have to implement this one feature and it's the select box that's going to kind of filter all of our uh, stocks here. And it's an important feature. And now that we have the data coming from our state, then it's going to be a lot easier to implement the whole functionality and then have it work exactly the same once we swap over to an API. So let's go over to our editor and we'll start building this thing. And the first thing that we are going to be doing is we're going to create a select component and it's going to be in source and we'll say components select and select JSX. And we'll create a functional component here called select. And we'll create a style sheet select dot module CSS and we'll import those styles. Now I do need an icon here, so I'm going to actually just let me do that real quick. I'm going to go to my downloads folder where I've downloaded a font awesome library and I'm just going to grab a icon that's called Chevron down. So if you're following along and you have font awesome, you can go and grab the, the Chevron down icon. And we're gonna grab that and I'm just gonna pull that into the icons folder. So yeah, there we have that SVG file. So uh, let's import that as well. Uh, React component as um, arrow down icon. And we'll say assets icons and chevron down. All right, so let's get started on this select box. So obviously we need a select and it's going to accept a few properties. It's going to accept a on change function, which is going to determine what's going to happen when we make a change in the select box. It'll take an array of options and we are going to accept a class name in case we want to override any classes and let's see what else perhaps a default value ah, let's just keep it there for now let's not overcomplicate this and then we'll add more things if we determine that we need them so inside of the select, we're going to give that a class name of styles select. And then we'll give the on change handler. And let's see what else. We'll wrap this entire thing in a div with a class name of styles select container and then we'll add the SVG icon with a class name of icon and make sure to return all of this and our options so options is going to be a 
array of options that we pass down um, from the component that is going to use this select box. Now, we want to have an array of objects passed down, uh, and the objects is, are going to be in the form of a value and a display value. So the value will be the actual value that the option has, and then we'll give a display value, which will be a text that we can uh, display in human readable form. So it'll just make it a little bit easier for us when we are doing our um, we're doing our comparisons in the one on change function later. So we'll get to that. But for now, uh, we're going to create a function called generate options or render options. And it's going to take options. And we are going to map over those. And for each option, we'll return a option. And inside we'll have the option dot display value. And then the real value will be put here. So we'll have the option dot value here, and then we'll say that the key is also the option value. So inside of the select, we'll go ahead and we'll put render options. And then we'll go ahead and we'll import the select into our dashboard component. So in the actually it's in our stock list component. So in our stock list we are going to put the select and that's going to import it and let's move it up a little bit and let's give it some options so it's going to be a an array so this is going to look weird right now, but uh, we'll put this into a function. Actually, let's put it into a function now. Get options. And we'll create that here. And that's going to return an array with objects. And the display value will be highest. Uh, let's see, dividend yield. And the value will be courier dividend yield courier or DI courier. Well, I don't like that very much. Dividend yield current here. All right, that's going to be long, but it's readable. So let's go ahead and give it an on change as well. And we'll go ahead and plug that in there. And we won't call that one because that's just a function that we, we give to the select component to call when it's uh, changing. So let's go ahead and check this out. So here we have our component now and it's not styled at all. So we need to go ahead and style it. So let's go ahead and give it another option 
first, just so we have something to work with. Highest dividend yield overall. And then the value will be dividend yield overall. All right, so let's get started styling it a little bit. So we'll take the select and we'll take the select container and then we'll say that the select container is going to be position relative. And then we'll take the select and we'll give it a background transparent border non border radius let's give it just a padding of five pixels and the color let's see and then we'll take the icon and we'll give it a five eight. and we'll say that the position is absolute right five pixel or actually let's do zero and we'll say that the width 10 picks and the height is also 10 pixels. All right. So now let's go to our stock lists and we'll say that the header has a display of flex and it's just gonna justify content space between. So that will position our uh, select box to our right here. So let's continue styling it a little bit. Let's give it a font size of var and we'll go to our index file and we'll grab the h1 font size and I want to make this a little bit smaller actually and let's add dark gray and let's add header color 1d 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 so I want to add, mm, let's say, header color, and we'll give the same to our select instead of this hex, and the font size will be H1 font size. just copied over some CSS to remove the default uh, drop-down um, icon so let's go ahead and change the width a little bit here so width say 400 that's a little bit too much let's say uh, 
and I want to move and change the icon a little bit. So let's say and we will go ahead and go into our dev tools and just take this and position it a little bit. So that should do it. And let's go to our stock list components and fix this error right here. And now we have a select that will allow us to change the filters here. And uh, it'll call the function that we provided, which is the on change function. Now, let's go ahead and see how we're going to do this. So inside of the on select, we will check which value we are currently currently at. And then we'll trigger a function to kind of filter the stocks. And then we'll have to put that back into the state. And uh, that seems like a task that we're going to be doing in the next video, because this is already pretty little long. So thanks you so <laughs> can't speak right now. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we'll tackle this in the next video. All right.